the last vlog we finally left Lefkas and we started heading through the Gulf of Patras. Um, we had a quite a close call with the bridge and then we ended up in sort of a Mad Max marina and um, we also had lots of generator problems but we did have our first barbecue. This vlog it's all about finishing off uh, the Gulf of Patras and going through the Corinth Canal, heading round to Epidavros and finally bringing the boat to Agina. You and me, we're family. The bond that we share is as deep as the sea. No matter how rough things may come to be. You and me, we're family. Sing home. Hey, long for the ride. By your side, boat. Hey, you'll always be all right by me. Yes, you're all right by me. Our last port of call before the Corinth Canal was Kyoto. Obviously, there's a few maintenance issues, it always is, so Woody's maintenance job on this passage was the toilets. Hi, What's your job today, Woody? I have my... The toilet. The toilet? Yeah. Probably nice. Got a, got a leakage on the toilet. A leakage? Yeah. So I'm trying to find the right spare part by taking other ones apart. Okay. You've got lots of spare parts there, Woody. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to get more information about maintaining heads on a boat, then um, you can see the link which is above. We did schooling as usual. We are trying to get all our schooling done before we enter the Corinth Canal. Yeah. And we put it together. Finish maths. We also did some navigation. We put 105. Yeah. We would adjust it, wouldn't we, to if there's any variation or deviation. Remember we did that. So going through the canal is quite an amazing experience and when you're aware of the history of it and how long it took to build it, it just feels quite awesome. Yes, we have pilot Haddock, Haddock, over. Yes, go ahead. Yes, we are pilot. We are approaching the canal from west side. Instructions, please, over. Stay outside, northeast, and waiting uh, my instruction to pass through the canal. Stay outside. All we see, this is Haddock out. We've got to stay outside the breakwater and wait for these instructions. So we got the children to research the Corinth Canal. The Corinth Canal. The French started making the canal and it was finished by the Greeks. The canal was completed in 1881, but the first usage of the canal was on the 25th of July, 1893. The canal is 3.2 miles long, 25 metres wide. The maximum permitted draft is 6.5 metres and the size of the canal rise up to 76 metres at the highest part of the cut. So we're just going through the Corinth Canal. about our navigation equipment but several times we appeared to be kind of on land. Thank you. 
money to go through the canal. Yes, we knew it was expensive, but we didn't realise. And the problem is, there's no way of finding out how much it's going to cost. So we were quite shocked. We estimated it might be 100 euros, maybe 150, but we never imagined it would be 315. 315 euros it cost to get through that canal. We just went round the um, coast to Epidavros. Epidavros is famous for its theatre and also its place of healing where people came from far and wide. Okay, so this is Epidavros and here behind us we've got the temple which was dedicated to Asclepion, the god of healing. Uh, people would come and stay in a hostel and sometimes if they had contagious diseases they would be isolated from the rest of the people. There was a ritual sort of eating hall and this is where they would have ritual meals because they thought that the gods were going to heal them but the things they used to eat around the times it mentions that one guy was eating like milk and honey, um, lime and water and they had to do lots of training and exercise which is probably more likely to be the case as to why they got healed. And also there was a kind of training area which is a bit like a gymnasium. You can see that there's this start line marked out with stone where they would do races and athletics in memory of Asclepion. This is the Abaton and it's, it was like a kind of wall that people had to get through. Kind of symbolically, if they hadn't prepared themselves properly, they wouldn't get healed. A lot of it's about washing really and baths. Um, so you've got the Tepidarium, the warm baths, the Caldarium, which was the hot baths, and then the um, Sudarium, which was the hot sweat rooms. And also there was fountains as well. And you also got channels everywhere where the water's delivered to different places. So I think, yeah, just the washing and the cleaning was the big thing about getting cured. And I think if that failed, then it's just left to the gods, really. Like, the stones we walk on are the stones what the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, what Rome, we're stepping on those stones from a thousand years ago. It's amazing, isn't it? And I think this place is cool because, like, and then it was the gods speaking to them and then we made that so they could speak to the gods. Okay, so this is the amphitheatre at Epidavros and the acoustics are so good that if you drop a coin or scrumble some paper then um, you can hear it right at the top seats up there. So after our day out in Epidavros, it's back to the day-to-day -day grind of maintenance on a boat. Hi Woody, what are you doing? Um, I'm making a filter system for the shoreside water, so we can have filtered water. Okay, so when we fill up from the shoreside, we can put filtered water into our boat. Yep. So, for the filter, just need to get the pipe sorted out. I'm trying to work it out from all these fittings. Ooh. You can also find out about how to filter your water system on our maintenance blogs. We were really surprised to um, find some neighbours where we were on the town quay and they were Czech. And um, so I had a little chat with them in Czech. I happened to speak Czech because my mother defected from the Czech Republic when it was um, communist um, in 1966. So she defected to the UK and, and got political asylum. And so even though I was born in England, my mother always spoke Czech to me. They're Czech and they live on their boats. And Ewan was quite inspired and he wanted to learn some words. So I was teaching Ewan how to speak Czech. Maminka, yeah? Sausage. Esther 
Yorkshire. Best of best. <laughs> Woody said that there was a supermarket that was only about four kilometers away and I thought great I'll go on the bike. It was four kilometers but it was right up the top of a hill. Okay I'm going shopping. But it did make me think how easy it was in England to get the shopping. I used to do all my shopping online and get delivery right to your doorstep. So doing it on a bicycle for a family of five is completely different. Son, he loves making things and um, any of the offcuts of wood that um, Woody uses to fix up the boat, he would try and make his earth cities. When we got to Agina, it was quite busy and we were really unsure about the depth. So we decided to anchor out and um, the kids could have a bit of a play. Yeah, we were lucky to have a small dinghy aboard. But the only problem was we couldn't find the attachments to fix the oars on. So Woody managed to um, cut off some old connections from an old dinghy that was being thrown away. So we kind of recycled an old dinghy, really. We kind of thought it was really important that they learn how to row the dinghy before they use the engine. So um, they had a go in left cast, but our youngest found it quite difficult because learning to row a dinghy is a new skill. and. He didn't quite get it in the winter, but this time he completely got to grips with rowing the dinghy and he got quite fast at it, so they had a great time. Oh, cool. Sit towards your body, that's it, now turn around with one, do it one, just how fast you're going. Two more of that one together there. Good job, good job, good job. So yeah, we kind of thought this was really, really perfect Anchorage, it was a really nice place to be. And um, the next day we were gonna move into the um, town quay because we had to plug into electricity because our generator wasn't working. Agina 
Smyrna is a really busy port. It's so close to Athens uh, and it was complete chaos. So we've got a cupboard over there which is blocking the entrance. We've got a and we don't know whether there's enough depth, do we, Woody? No, we don't. Three charts say three different things. We're just going to try, well, we're going to get in there when they pick their anchor up. trying to find people to fix things. You can't just call a number and go online. It's just not like that. Lots of language barriers in trying to find an engineer to fix your boat. It's getting too hot. So you think both solenoids are faulty? Yes. I think that the bad contact over there yeah. caused all the damages on the engine. So I have a relay, I can uh, bring you a relay, I have with me a, relay, a big relay like this. See, but this, I don't have this. This is a special part. Yeah, okay, but the only reason you need that solenoid is to use the switch in the galley. In the galley, okay. So we don't really need that. This relay has too many wires on it. This yeah. is plastic, this is for boats, this is a special for boats. Maybe we should go with that. This is a good relay. This is 70 euro. Okay. Uh, it's a good one, 200 a bear. Yeah. We finally got the generator working again. It has broken down a few times before, but yeah, we've got it going again. It works, but I don't know for how long. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Maybe it will last forever. So one job finishes and another one starts. That's the kind of thing you get on a boat, I suppose. What are you doing, Woody? Um, we're trying to drop the mizzen because there is no halyard for the rig check, for the rig check guy to go up. So to give him a line to go up, we have to drop the mizzen. But unfortunately, the mizzen halyard isn't long enough. So I'm now stitching on a mousing line so we can drop the sail, stick another line up, and so we can safely go up the mast. So why this halyard is so short, I have no idea. This time we wanted to rig up another line so someone could fix our rigging. Okay, the rigging, the stuff that holds the mast up. But um, while we're trying to put another line up there, uh, we managed to lose the original line. What happened, Woody? Well, the whole reason for doing was this was so we'd have a halyard to go up the mast. And I thought I'd cleated the end off, but I hadn't. And so as I was sorting things out at this end, it all ran up through the mast and came out. So now we've got no halyard at all. We had to go back to the UK to um, collect loads of spare parts and also um, sort out our VHF, our AIS system. And the main thing really was to um, get the children Czech citizenship and apply for their passports. I've already got citizenship and I wanted to renew mine and I wanted to organise it for the children because um, when UK leaves um, Europe, I think it would be good to have um, European passports still. We also had a few appointments for eye checkup. So Agina seemed like the best island. It was close to Athens, loads of ferries that go, quite a secure key for um, Woody to stay on his own on the boat. Typically, there was a ferry strike. So we need to go home for a couple of weeks. We need to upgrade our um, MMSI number equipment. We need to get some passports renewed. We've got some appointments at the eye hospital. And today, they're all on strike. So I've asked in the port police, and he said he thinks maybe the strike will end tomorrow. But I asked the lady who sells pistachio nuts, and she said that last year, the strike was supposed to be one day, and it lasted for 18 days. So who knows? Normally, there's stacks of ferries lined up along here, coming in and out constantly. In fact, we were even worried about leaving our boat here because of the swell. But today, there is absolutely zero ferries. Um, and we need to get across there to get our flight back to England. I'm not stressed because we're on this beautiful Greek island that we are struggling to get off. The office opened, one good thing. The ferry, she said the ferry's going, it's two good things. Now we have to try and get there.
So the seven o'clock ferry isn't here. Um, I don't know if there's going to be an eight o'clock one. If the eight o'clock one doesn't come, then we miss our flight. So the kids keep asking whether we're going and um, I don't have the answer. Yes, I have planned everything to the minute detail, but then all of that plan is irrelevant if the ferry decides not to go. So what do you learn from this? Um, make a plan, be ready to break it. <laughs> That's my motivational angry. speech. <laughs> that should go in TripAdvisor. So we're gonna get on the hydrofoil and then we're gonna go to the airport in Athens and then we're gonna go home. We left Woody behind to look after the boat and um, we set off. Is that pointing the right way? That's pointing down, isn't it? Um, we thought, because it's been a year since we've been doing this blogging, Woody's got together all the outtakes and um, he's compiled them all into one video. You can click on the link if you want to see all our outtakes and have a laugh on us. You and me, we're family No matter how far away we've grown to be We travel on to unknown destinies but you So thank you for watching these videos. If you like them, then please keep subscribing on the YouTube channel, uh, like us on Facebook and share with everybody. And also, if you want to, please do help support the creation, editing and um, producing of the videos. You can support us on Patreon um, to keep making these videos. Thank you. And if you want to do it, do it. I'll stay by your side